Hello everyone, welcome to the daily newspaper analysis brought by Shankar IAS Academy today, 28th November. Displayed here are the list of articles that we will be discussing today. The first article, Odisha lost 790 elephants in the past decade, says Minister. So, this article is talking about the significant reduction of elephant population in the state of Odisha, which was highlighted by the Environmental Minister in the State Assembly. And this article is taken from the newspaper, The Hindu. And the second article, what is government's one nation one subscription initiative this article is talking about this initiative one nation one subscription and in this topic we will be discussing uh, what is the objective of this scheme and what are the basic features here that you should be remembering and uh, this article is taken from the newspaper indian express and the third article government notifies second phase of pm e drive scheme e drive scheme which is looking for the expansion of the electric vehicles because it is a need of this hour because the major cities including the national capital is going through the threat of severe pollution including air pollution and we know that according to the B british medicine british medical magazine the air pollution is a reason behind 10 million death every year it is a significant step so this article will be discussing the basic facts related to the scheme uh, its objectives the nodal ministry for the implementation what is the expansion of this pradhan mandri e drive scheme and this article is taken from the newspaper Indian Express. So, without much delay, let's begin our discussion with the first article. Beginning with the first article, what is government's One Nation, One Subscription Initiative? So, yesterday we saw this news uh, on the TV. So, what is this all about? So, to understand about this initiative, you have to understand about the college library. So, in every college, in every education institution run by government or the private, you will be having a library, right? So, in the library, you can access both as well as research journals and other magazines related to education and at the same time through the e-library you can access e-journals. So, the colleges can make two types of subscription for this journal. First one is with the government and second one with the individual subscription. So, uh, under the government, uh, the subscription will be done through the uh, library consortia which is managed by the information and the library network center which is located in Gandhinagar, uh, Gujarat. So, uh, this at present, what this initiative is focusing on bringing a reform in this in the government subscription. That is, the colleges will be subscribing in this library consortia, and this library consortia. That is, at presently there are more than or ten or more than library consortia are there. So the government is planning to bring this ten library consortia, which is currently administered by various ministries under one single platform. So hereafter. Once this program is launched, the, then the research scholars or the faculties can access the e-journals through a single platform. So, that is what this initiative is all about. So, let us discuss more about this initiative from the prelims point of view. So, the initiative, the One Nation, One Subscription will be launched and the budget allocation is for the next three years, that is 25, 26, 27. And what is objective? Like I said, providing a centralized access to academic journals for higher education institutions implementing agencies information and a library uh, network center which is located which is regular which is located in gandhinagar and working under the ugc and the budget nearly 6000 is allocated for the year 25 to 27 so from the prelims point of view you have to note what is objective of this one one nation one subscription and what is the implementing agency for this please note this this will be asked in prelims and coming to the objectives the first major objective is providing equitable access like i said the colleges can make, like I said, the, the reform will be done in the library consortia. Therefore, high quality resources for higher education institutions, including in higher education institutions located in tier 2 and tier 3 cities will be provided and cost efficiency. For example, you have to understand that the same journal will be available in another library also. So, the colleges sometimes will make a, a, you know double subscription or uh, a duplicate subscription. So, this kind of overlapping can be avoided if there is a single platform. At the same time, it can also save a cost approximately 4000 to 1800 rupees. So, this is uh, cost efficient because it is minimizing the overlapping expenses. And the third one is strengthening research ecosystem. Yes through providing an access to th nearly 13,000 journals will, will encourage the research champions in the education institutions and data driven insight. So, one, since the, uh, the journals are accessible or provided through a single platform, then the government can track how that, the, how much, you know, um, journals are utilized and how, a, and how they are utilized. So, such data can be tracked and this will be helpful in planning the future projects under this coming to the key features of the one nation one subscription centralized access that is 
providing access to nearly 13,000 journals under a single platform. Publishers, these are the publishers' name, Elsevier, Springer, Willy, etc. And uh, beneficiaries. So, as per the estimation, uh, the One Nation One Subscription Initiative will benefit at least 6,300 education, higher education institutions in India and it, it will benefit at least 1.8 crore students, faculties and researchers. And the cost negotiation is the next key feature that is reduced annual subscription. Like I said, it is cost efficient. It can minimize the overlapping, overlapping expense and it will give an opportunity for the uh, you know the college to access maximum government journals from a single platform but at the same time the, the initiative is not restricting the colleges or the higher education institutions from uh, from making uh, individual subscriptions if they want they can go for individual subscriptions too and then there is resource optimization that is avoiding duplication of subscriptions coming to the significance of the one nation one subscription it is aligning with the national education policy 2020 which is uh, equally giving importance to research and innovation and skill training so this reform will bring a positive impact in the research and the education research and the innovation and the second one is inclusivity that is uh, through a single platform the government can give equal access to the research journals to every part of uh, every part of india at present like i said it is nearly 6000 education institutions will be benefited including education institutions in uh, tier 2 and tier 3 cities so this is in ensuring inclusivity and economic benefits for example saves public fund like i said uh, the colleges can avoid overlapping expenses and uh, they can reduce the overlapping expenses at the same time it gives an opportunity to negotiate with the publishers however this project has certain challenges uh, let us see what are the major challenges first one is adoption that is uh, ensuring that all the higher education institutions are properly or actively utilizing this platform uh, for their research purposes so adopting uh, the change is a big challenge and sec second one is maintenance or sustainability of the project for example uh, the cost of renewable and the maintenance of this uh, for a very uh, maintenance of this initiative for a very long time it is also a questionable matter and then integration that is aligning the one nation one subscription initiate with the existing uh, research frameworks so these are major challenges in the field of os that is one nation one na one subscription initiative in this topic we discussed what is this one nation one nation subscription and how it is benefiting the edu higher education institutions students research scholars and faculties and uh, what are the challenges associated with this so try to answer this prelims practice question the question is which of the following is the key objective of the one nation one subscription option a promoting private investments in education option b reducing article processing charges for indian researchers and option c launching new university libraries and option d subsidizing education loans the answer is option b reducing article processing charges for indian researchers like i said through uh, publishing uh, the articles through reputed publishers we can reduce the article processing charges for indian researchers that is a major benefit that is a major benefit of this scheme so i hope you understood so with this we will move to the next article coming to the next article government notifies second phase of pradhan mandri e drive so this newspaper article is talking about the pradhan mandri e drive scheme which is focusing on the expansion of electric vehicles because we know that it is a need of our because the national capital and all the major cities in india are suffering from pollution especially the air pollution and according to the british medical journal air pollution is the major reason behind the 10 million death every year so this is a high time to take significant steps to fight the air pollution so this is a major initiative so let us discuss more about this articles from the prelims point of view First, we will start with the basic question, what is the full form of this Pradhan Mandri e-drive scheme? It refers to PM electric drive innovative, electric drive in revolution in innovative vehicle enhancement and uh, this is the central sector scheme which means 100% fund will be done by the central government and the nodal ministry for the implementation is ministry of heavy industries, not that it is not the ministry of transport, it is not the ministry of environment, it is the ministry of heavy industries, they are the nodal ministry, this can be a tricky question in prelims coming to the general objectives of the scheme uh, first is focusing on adoption of electric vehicles that is the objective is to reduce the dependence on the fossil fuel and the second is manufacturing and uh, strengthening the supply chain for example give, uh, through strengthening uh, the uh, the programs like atmanirbhar bharat uh, we are focusing on indigenous manufacturing of electric vehicles 
and the third one is charging infrastructure that is expansion of charging infrastructure under the scheme the government is looking to install 70,000 charging facilities across the nation this will be very useful in encouraging the people to purchase electric vehicles and at the same time it will also reduce anxieties related to charging and uh, the next major objective is strengthening the testing facility that is ensuring the safety sustainability of electric vehicles and its parts especially the battery coming to the eligibility under the scheme that is uh, which are the vehicles eligible for subsidies under the uh, Pradhan Mandri e-drive scheme the first is electric two wheelers electric three wheelers electric buses electric ambulance electric trucks and uh, l5 uh, three wheeled vehicles so let us discuss briefly so electric two wheelers we know that bike uh, scooters and all electric three wheelers auto rickshaw like that and uh, under this Pradhan Mandri uh, e-drive scheme uh, the government has allocated an exclusively 500 crore for purchasing of nearly 14,000 e-buses and uh, uh, the eligibility criteria for ambulance is still under the uh, under consideration because the eligibility will uh, will be decided eligibility criteria for the ambulance will be decided by the ministry of uh, uh, health and family welfare so not that and uh, nearly 500 crore has been allocated for the purchase of e-ambulance too as per the data from the press information bureau and coming to the uh, case of e-trucks uh, like that 500 crore exclusively allocated for the purchase of e-trucks and at the same time coming to the l5 vehicles what do you mean by l5 vehicles l5 vehicles are the vehicles or three wheelers mentioned in the uh, central motor vehicle rules 1989 and this can be classified into l5m l5n vehicles l5m means passenger vehicles like auto rickshaw and l5n means uh, cargo vehicles or three wheelers used for uh, for the transportation of goods they are also coming under the eligibility criteria for uh, pm uh, e drive scheme coming to the major features of the scheme like i said infrastructure development infrastructure development that is like i said uh, 70000 charging facilities will be installed across the nation and this 2000 crore rupees has been allocated for electric two wheelers three wheelers and uh, buses and trucks and uh, technological support that is approximately 700 crore has been exclusively allocated for the development of better uh, facilities for you know for assessing the sustainability and the strength of electric vehicles especially its parts and the battery and the third major feature is, is sustainability and innovation that is that is the scheme is also encouraging the people to scrap all the diesel vehicles at the same time it is looking for the expansion of electric vehicles in both urban and rural area what are the benefits uh, received under the scheme first one is financial incentives like i said uh, electric two wheelers three wheelers and uh, electric um, buses they are all receiving financial incentives under the pradhan mantri drive scheme and uh, infrastructure development especially looking for the expansion of e vehicles and uh, another major thing is this scheme e drive scheme is mainly focusing on public transport rather than private transport the private transport will also receive benefits but it is more focusing on uh, strengthening or the expansion of public e vehicles and uh, infrastructure development and the third is public mobility like i said encouraging the people to use uh, public transport rather than uh, private vehicles and socio-economic and the next is economic and environmental gains environmental gains means uh, the focus of the scheme is to indigenously develop it is for giving focus for indigenous development of e-vehicles too under the programs like Atmanar Bar Bharat. At the same time, environmental gain means reducing the, the dependence on fossil fuels and diesel-based vehicles. So, these are the environmental benefits and uh, this will be very useful for our, our um, net zero emissions uh, project 2070. So, these are the major features that you should be remembering for your prelims examination regarding the PM e-drive scheme and if you know further things please comment it others will also learn and now we will try a prelims practice question based on our discussion the question is with reference to pm e drive scheme consider the following statements statement one it is a central sector scheme under the ministry of heavy industries statement two the scheme aims to promote electric mobility by providing subsidies for electric two wheelers three wheelers e buses and e trucks and statement three the scheme includes financial support for setting up EV charging infrastructure across the country and the statement for it is implemented by the state governments with the financial assistance from the central government. Which of the above statements is or are correct? Option A, 1 and 2 only. Option B, 1, 2 and 3 only. Option C, 2 and 3 only. Option D, 1, 2, 3 and 4. The correct answer we know. 
option b one two and three it is implemented by the central government so the fourth statement is wrong but anyway let's check the answer yes the answer is option b one two and three only so i hope you understood and uh, let's move to the next article coming to the next article odisha lost 790 elephants in the past decade says minister the environmental minister of the state of odisha ganesh ram highlighted this issue while responding to a query in the state assembly according to the estimation the unnatural reason behind the elephant death are the first major reason is electrocution and the second major reason is the collision with the trains and apart from that there are natural reasons such as diseases which almost claimed uh, uh, 290 elephants and other natural reasons claimed uh, nearly 260 elephants in the state so let us discuss more about the elephants from prelims point of view so from the so from our studies we know that elephants are a keystone species which plays a significant role in ecological balance but how the prelims question will be asked regarding the elephants so when you see such a news on newspaper or television you have to note the status conservational status of these animals whether it is elephants birds or anything you have to note the conservation status and uh, under what schedule they are protected in wildlife protection act and what is their status under the citus so you have to note all these things and uh, and you have to note which state has the highest uh, population of elephants and which state has a, a declined population of every of elephants and you have to note if there is any recent initiatives regarding the elephants and then you have to note you know if there is any recent such as national park or any other conservative initiatives have taken by the government so these are the things you have to note while you are seeing any species in the newspaper so here we have mentioned almost everything so the coming to the IUCN red list the elephant is considered as endangered and the Wildlife Protection Act in 1972, the elephant is protected under the schedule number one, which is preventing them from hunting and other illegal activities. So, this ensures the protection of elephants. At the same time, if any person violating these norms, they will be penalized or they will face severe punishment. And uh, CITUS, it is protected under Appendix 1 and uh, therefore, it has a lot of measures such as re uh, restrictions in the trade of elephants and elephant body parts for example the elephants are mostly hunted or posted by the people for the trunks right ivory so this kind of activities will be prevented and uh, at present india has total 33 elephant reserves and recently terai elephant reserve was established in the state of uttar pradesh and at present as per the estimation india has almost 101 elephant corridors and the majority of this elephant corridors are located in the state of west bengal which is the highest percentage of 17 percentage and elephant corridors means the regular path used by the uh, elephants for uh, for for their movement and uh, for their food and other needs coming to the global status of elephant population india hosts nearly 60 percentage of the world elephant population and we know that elephant can be broadly categorized into two uh, groups first one is african and second one is asian elephants so out of this asian elephants the majority of this population are located in india and uh, we have already discussed what are the physical characteristics of this African elephants and uh, Asian elephants in our one of our previous videos. You can watch that video. And uh, African elephants, they are larger in size comparing to the uh, Asian elephants. And in the case of African elephants, both the male and female will have uh, uh, trunks, while in the case of Asian elephants, only male will have trunks. So, these kind of physical features uh, or this kind of differences you cannot we can understand from our video try to watch the video and um, or please understand these differences this can be asked in upsc prelims and uh, coming to the uh, the distribution of the elephant population uh, state wise we can see karnataka the state of karnataka has the highest elephant population around 6000 followed by assam and uh, then by kerala coming to the recent estimations regarding the decline of elephant population in in india we came to know that since 2017 we lost nearly 20 percentage of elephant population and the majority of this decline was happened in the central india and the eastern guts which recorded almost 41 percentage decline in the elephant population and coming to the state wise uh, the majority of this elephant corridors are located in the west bengal state so the west bengal registered a decline of 84 percentage while jharkhand declared a declared a population reduction of elephants around 66 per 68 percentage and in odisha they lost around 54 percentage and coming to the regional trend we can see the western guards also recorded significant reduction in the elephant population that is coming around 18 percentage and other regions like shivalik ranges and the 
gangetic plains also recorded a decline of 2 percentage in the elephant population so the reduction of this elephant population is an is a major and a crucial indicator that the ecological balance itself is becoming a matter of question each and every day coming to the major threats or general reasons behind the decline of this population you can guess the reasons this will be useful in both prelims as well as in mains. The first major reason is habitat loss and uh, the environmental degradation. This is done to various factors such as the deforestation, unregulated or unplanned uh, development activities like that. And the second major reason is illegal killing. That is killing the elephants for their trunks, ivory. Ivory has huge value in black markets and all this kind of illegal people or antisocial people will be killing these elephants for profit. So this is another major reason behind the elephant death and uh, developmental pressures for example for example mega infrastructure projects railways and uh, this can uh, result in habitat loss at the same time they can also kill the elephants in various unnatural ways for example in this like i said in the state of odisha uh, nearly 126 elephants died because of electrocution and uh, 26 elephants died because of collision with a train and so this unplanned developments can lead to electrocution and the railway collision and uh, as per the estimation the state of odisha and the state of karnataka recorded nearly 20 to 25 percentage of elephant train collision in the last year and the next major reason is the habitat fragmentation that is once they lose the habitat the elephants will migrate uh, will be fragmented and will be migrating to other places in search of food and a better environment so this habitat loss can lead to habitat fragmentation or the population fragmentation of these elephants which will eventually make them vulnerable uh, to death and the next major reason is the challenges in the northeast this is due to various factors we can uh, we can see that the expansion of the agricultural lands or the plantations or the expansion of the development projects all this will bring the animals in contact with the man and this can result in the man animal conflict for example recently the the, the district idiki in kerala witnessed uh, a, a frequent conflict with uh, uh, an elephant called Arikumban. So the major reason behind this kind of issues is the land encroachment, uh, expansion of plantations for profit and unplanned uh, developmental or projects or developmental activities. So now we are going to see certain initiatives taken by the government to conserve the, uh, the population of elephants. First one is Project Elephant which was launched in the year 1992. It is a centrally sponsored scheme under the Ministry of Environment. And this scheme is focusing on uh, protection of the elephant corridors and welfare of the uh, elephants in captivities and then also uh, other issues such as the man-animal conflict and all. So these are the major area of focus of the scheme. And coming to the next scheme that is Mike program 2003. Mike means monitoring of illegal killing of elephants in 10 elephant reserves in India. So this was initially launched in 2003. Uh, with major focus on 10 elephant reserves in India and it is gradually expanding now. And the next major initiative is the Gaja Yatra and Gaja Shilpi. These initiatives are focusing on highlighting the focusing on awareness generation about the importance of elephants in ecological balance as well as environmental sustainability. And then we have the Gaj Gaurav Award. This is uh, given to the individuals uh, who contributed who done exemplary works for elephant conservation in India. So these are the major schemes done by the government of India to protect the elephants. So in this topic, we discussed what are the major, resigned, major reasons behind the elephant population decline and uh, what are the initiatives taken by the government of India to protect the elephants. And then also we saw significant data from IUC and CITES and also uh, Wildlife Protection Act. So it's time to check your knowledge with the prelims practice question. The question is, which state has the highest number of identified elephant corridors in India? So it's a direct, it's a factual question. Option A, Karnataka, Option B, West Bengal, Option C, Assam and Option D, Tamil Nadu. The answer, just now we discussed, that is West Bengal, it has around 101 elephant corridors and it has highest elephant population, sorry, highest elephant corridors, which is coming around 17 percentage. And this state, witnessed the major decline especially the southern west bengal uh, recorded a significant decline in the elephant population so we discussed anyway we will check the answer yes the answer is west bengal only with this we are coming to the conclusion for this video if you like the video hit the like button give your feedback as your comments and uh, share this content with your friends and also 
subscribe to this channel before leaving and uh, hit the bell icon to receive on time update from shangri IS academy and there is one more announcement the current affair compilation for the month october is available on our youtube channel kindly check it out and the link will be given in the description and now thank you have a nice day